Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday, 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 yes, Wednesday. at Little Kitchen. We're very excited. We are, are going to announce today that we're going to reopen starting next week on Tuesday, half capacity and um, a lot of extra safety measures and precautions. But you know, at Little Kitchen, we're pretty proud of the fact that we have an independent workstation. We practice sanitation and um, cleaning really well, hand washing. So we're pretty excited to continue our journey of empowering these kids. And uh, I'm so excited to see the children. It is so quiet in here. Like it's- It will be great <sighs> to have so some excited. little chefs back in here for sure. Yeah. And we've been um, scouring, I don't know, Katie, about you, but I follow dozens and dozens of blogs um, you know, with just to try and keep up on different food trends and see what's going on, see different tools and materials, what people are doing. And uh, one that I've been, it's just been capturing my eye, literally, because it's so beautiful, uh, is this art, you know, these mm -hmm. focaccia breads and these baguettes that people are putting and embellishing with, with herbs and vegetables. Such a fun project. Oh, and they just, they look amazing. And we actually have a really good focaccia bread recipe at Little Kitchen that doesn't take too long. And you know, if we've made a beautiful soup or a salad or something, sometimes if we have enough time with our students, we'll quickly whip up a batch. Sounds funny to say that, but we can whip up a batch of uh, focaccia. So I'm gonna use our focaccia bread recipe, but I think we'll spend a lot of time on how to embellish it and how to really involve your kids. Um, and this is, this is so much fun. Katie and I were talking, we'll probably make this in one of our first few classes back. Oh, I think so. I think the students will love doing they this. They will love this. Yeah. You know, and we talk so much about, um, well, I know, I argue this a lot with people. You know, you can learn so much in the kitchen, at Little Kitchen. I, I think you can learn more here than you can um, in the first few years of school, quite frankly. When well, I think school. this particular recipe is a perfect example of incorporating math, science, it art, chemistry. all rolled into it one. Has chemistry, yeah. In here, um, you're, that's exactly it. And I and I think more and more recipes. When you break it down, you can see just how much these kids are being exposed to. And you know, it's not like they're going to go home and all of a sudden be able to um, divide fractions and add the, things like that together, but. They, they capture it, right? Absolutely, you know, it's the exposure and exactly. the introduction to it. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, when they're sitting in the classroom or online, depends on, or maybe a bit of both yeah. in the future, <laughs> they're, you know, when they're introduced to adding fractions, they're going to, it's gonna come back, right? They're yeah. gonna be able to pull it out and visually see it and then be able to really take that into the abstract and understand it. Gets those little neurons firing. It does. Love it. Okay, I gotta do this. Um, I gotta start the yeast blooming. So um, yeast is um, there's so yeast is quite confusing. You know, with the flatbread, we do need um, yeast to help leaven it. But um, or excuse me, with focaccia. But uh, yeast, there's so many different kinds at the grocery store you can buy. There's active. There's fresh. There's instant. Um, rapid is, is similar to uh, active, like there's, there's, or excuse me, instant. There's so many confusing ways to look at it and we actually bring in both mm -hmm. here um, because sometimes we want that proofing part of the class so the children can really see it. Sometimes we just gotta get it going right. and, um, and it's really beautiful science. Uh, active, we're gonna use active dry yeast today because I do like to watch it proof, or excuse me, to watch it bloom. That's a beautiful um, experience um, with chemistry and seeing how it works and explaining what that microorganism is. You know, and yeast, um, yeast is, uh, is, it's alive, right? And we explain it to the, the students, it's a microorganism that is sitting and it's waiting to be fed. Kind of like, sometimes we describe it as, you know, what's your favorite thing to do when you're tired and you've had a long day? Get into a warm bath and have something sweet to eat. It's kind of the same with yeast, right? Yeah. Yeast needs the three things, um, moisture, um, warmth, and sugar. Yeah. And we describe it like, you know, the yeast, I'm gonna start, you know what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, we just I get really passionate about it. We, um, we describe it like the little um, yeast granules, they eat the sugar, right? They love the sugar, just like our students love the sugar. So this is half a cup of warm tap water. Um, our taps are limited to, um, are restricted, so we don't want too hot for our students. 
I'm gonna make sure I'm getting the right amount, um, so they don't ever get burnt. But uh, it's just it's just bath water warm, right? It's just yeah. nice enough. This past your um, your body temperature. So we put the yeast in here, and what we can do if you don't have honey or sweetener uh, at home, a little bit of sugar will work. I obviously I love to use a bit of honey quarter teaspoon of honey goes in there. And what's gonna happen now is the yeast is gonna get super excited, right? It's sitting in a bath, it's got a little bit of sugar, it's gonna start to eat that sugar. And as it eats the sugar, it creates carbon dioxide. Um, yeah, Cara, I just wanna make sure I'm getting it right. It makes, creates carbon dioxide, and that helps blow it up. It's like the inside of a balloon, right? It just and it's so interesting to watch. I think the students, <sighs> you know, it. it really inspires them or excites them to yeah. see this, Thing. It is. It's moving and changing and growing. It's very, yeah. very exciting. So we do a yeast recipe at uh, Little Kitchen. We'll proof it right, or we'll bloom it right away, and we'll leave it like this. And as we go and line up and go and pick up all the other ingredients, the yeast is doing its work. And you know, it's funny. The kids always say, you know, we we look at it with our eyes. We look at the difference in the color. We look at um, the di the disappearance of the granules and the reappearance of the foam, and we smell it. And so many of our students, it's like. Mm, smells like daddy's beer. <laughs> you hear that? It like daddy's yeah, there's beer. there's no secrets here, with our, especially with the younger ones. That's Amazing. Right. So uh, while this blooms, we're going to put in. This is another thing I wanted to show you. There's so many elements of joy that um, come out of our children when they walk in. You know, they squeal with delight. And one big factor is the KitchenAid. Everybody they, wants to use the KitchenAid. They want, and you know, our youngest students, our youngest class, we have the KitchenAids waiting. It's just too heavy and cumbersome for them to lift it from the cabinet. But our older students, we teach them how to carefully lift it up and plug it in. But the second our <laughs> kids come in and they see it, there's, oh, we're using this, we're using this. They absolutely love it. So I'm just going to measure out um, one and a quarter cups of flour to go into our mix. And with focaccia bread, and this is a small recipe, we could easily do this by hand. And that's another beautiful tactile experience in itself. But sometimes we want to remember that part of our job is to empower these children and keep them safe in their own kitchen at home. So let's teach them the safe, responsible way to use these materials. So when they go home, they know how to do it. Okay, so we've got the flour in here. We need a little bit of salt. So for everybody just joining us here, we are making Little Kitchen Academy's own focaccia recipe, and we're going to yeah. finish it in a really special way. Yeah, we're going to we're going to take another um, art lesson in, in with our life skills, and with our math, and with our science. We're going to do a little bit of art today. It's going to be great. Okay, so now we've got this ready. Um, what we would do is we would wait for this to bloom. You can see it starting right now. It's getting a little foamy. Just Stocks 19 says she is looking forward to Little Kitchen Academy summer camps. And oh, oh boy, so are we. We are so excited. We're right in the midst of planning all the recipes we're going to be cooking yeah. and charting all that out. And it's so exciting. And it's so much fun. You know, throughout the year, the school year, we only get to see these students once a week. And it's great. And, you know, they, they come in. We love Mondays because so-and-so is coming. But when we have the summer camps, we see them all throughout Monday through Friday. Yeah. And they get so excited. And we can continue conversations. And we can really build on their skills that they've picked up Monday and Friday. And, you know, we tend to do a more simple, lighthearted recipe the first day of camp. And we work all the way through finishing it with a really decadent this is Katie's favorite, right? <laughs> this is going to be your favorite thing because you weren't here last summer to plan these um, recipes, these menus. You're going to love Fridays in the summer. A little bit. So good. So once the um, yeast is bloomed, super simple. We just pour it in and scoop it out. I'm not going to turn it on because it's going to get a little loud in here. But we would just turn this on with the dough hook and we would mix it up until it becomes a beautiful soft ball. And then um, we let it rest. And what I did is I just put a, a towel over top and just let it rest. It's quite warm in here, so it just... And that'll help um, for the dough not to dry out as well. Yeah. So there we are. So now we have the dough. Beautiful, lovely dough. It smells awesome. At this point, the kids lose their mind because they put the towel over a little small piece that was wet and so, you know, kind of looked a little rough. And, you know, all of a sudden it's come back. All of that yeast has eaten and fermented and it's just 
Very yes. exciting. Yeah, it's amazing. So Fee Rintoul is here saying a little hello from your niece. Uh, I love my nieces. I don't know if it's Abby or Emily watching, but hello. Wait till you see what Auntie is making. Okay, so now our, our um, little baking trays. This is a perfect size for our recipe. You know, um, this focaccia bread is, or focaccia bread is similar to a pizza dough or a bread dough. It's just less yeast. It's just going to be nice and thin. We're going to stretch it thin. You can do so many things with this, right? You can um, put caramelized onions on it. You can make it savory, little bits of cheese. It doesn't take very long to bake. So whatever you put on top of it, be mindful of that. This is going to bake in an oven for 15 minutes. So whatever you put on top, you need to make sure it doesn't either burn or it doesn't need more cooking time than that. I do think focaccia is a really nice one to start with if you if you haven't done bread baking much yeah. before because it yeah. is quite forgiving. It's if you, really forget about it and it rises a little bit too much, it's gonna be okay. If it's slightly underproofed, it's gonna be okay. Yeah, this is a the, great one. The word would be billowy, right? <laughs> billowy, yes. It's, it's very smelly. forgiving yeah. and it's uh, it's gonna be delicious, yeah. sort of no matter how you do it, really. It is, for sure. So I just, this again, we're just getting our painting skills, our artistic skills warmed up. I drizzled a little bit of olive oil. We want, we want a decent amount um, in the bottom because we want this to come out of the, uh, tray really easily. We also want to be able to stretch and move it around and flavor the dough. I don't know if you remember, but we didn't add any extra flavorings to this dough. You know, if you were making this at home to throw in some fresh herbs or Delicious. some dried herbs, perfect. In yeah. So we have our beautiful dough and depending on our students, how much of um, time we have in the class, uh, I would certainly show them how to roll this out. But with focaccia, it's a really fun activity to actually use your hands mm -hmm. and press it in. So we'll just press it in. This probably won't fit the whole tray because we're doing a small recipe today. But to press it and stretch it out like this. And again, this is a great experience for our students. Exploring their sense of touch, having some fun seeing how it stretches. Why does it spring back? All of these things. So now um, I would invite them to push down. Can you see this, Katie? Yeah, it looks great. Push down, uh, make some little indents in here. And again, we want it to be lovely and glossy, and we want it to have lots of beautiful flavor. So a little bit of olive oil again, and we'll brush it and make sure the olive oil falls into all the divots that we've so just nice. created. So nice, yeah. Yeah. All the divots we've created with our fingers. And this is where we would find, you know, <laughs> little bites just making sure it's okay right and I don't blame them there's something really um, comforting about the smell oh, of yeah. dough well and as we talked about yesterday unless there's raw egg in it we actively encourage our students should. to taste throughout the process that yeah. is part of the learning it is. and it's certainly important when you're cooking yeah you're, exactly and and it's great to see how we change it mm -hmm. you know because you know, we talk a lot about exploring our taste buds and, you know, our students may have said, no, I don't like tomatoes because they tried it once, yes. one time prepped this way. Well, at Little Kitchen, if you come in on a Monday and you see a tomato that's almost ready to be picked and Tuesday goes by, Wednesday goes by, it's ready and you pick it yes. and you wash it, you try, you may not like it still, but now we'll pick another one and maybe we'll slice it yeah. and we'll roast it. Maybe you like it roasted because it's sweeter. Maybe you like it when you throw it in the blender and make ketchup. Like there's, the great lesson is always, you don't like it yet. We yeah. haven't discovered the way you do like it. Yeah. And we never shame a child. You know, we never talk about, um, you know, you should like it, you will like it. We never force them. We empower them to choose on their own. Anyways, okay. So now I've got the focaccia ready to go like this. This is simple. Throw a little bit of um, beautiful kosher salt on there, throw it in the oven just like that. Add any of your ingredients, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create art. I, and I don't know if anybody's seen this in magazines or in, in food blogs or whatever. This will be so much fun, and I suspect this is where um, we'll get our kids trying new things for the sake of art. Um, I saw a few beautiful ones, Confession. <laughs> big time confession, and I, I don't know if Gwen's watching right now, mm -hmm. I actually had my 15-year-old uh, daughter, who's a brilliant artist, make one last night. So the end, I'll show you how to start it, we'll throw it in the oven, but I'll show you what she made last night. Yeah, let's see what you can do. 
I'm gonna see some. Uh, I'm gonna see some stick men. Um. Yeah. Well, it's just super simple, right? And yeah. this is where I would certainly, as an instructor, invite the students into our uh, pantry and our fridge, yes. and I would have them explore. You know, we talked all about uh, at some point our fridge, the bottom shelf in our fridge, in our glass refrigerator, is full of extras, right? Yes, and this options. Is where, yeah, and this is where we um, invite our students to come and try uh, anything to add to their salad, to add to their pizza, or add to their pasta, whatever they're making yes. that day, they can, they can certainly add to it. And this is where, you know, for the sake of art, oh, I really want this to look like a rose, or a happy face, or a yes. rainbow. We may get extra things on here. And as if we were doing this in class, because we've got that nice three hour space of work time, yeah. our students would be choosing, washing, prepping, chopping all of these they ingredients all themselves. Of yeah, yeah, which would be a great activity. Time, for the sake of time, I thought I would leave it. So like, like seriously, these beautiful little baby bell peppers, so you know, sweet. As, they're, as they're working with them, one is going to go in their mouth, right? They are going to eat them um, just to see if they like the taste, just to see if they, taste as good as they look, you know, depending on uh, their curiosity. Some of them will eat the whole thing, like right, right away. So for the few people just joining us here, you can see this beautiful piece of art coming together here. <laughs> it is, it's, 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 it's gorgeous. <laughs> no, we're making Little Kitchen Academy's uh, focaccia, but we're doing it in a very artistic and yeah. vegetable forward way today. Yeah, this is definitely um, a way I believe that we can invite new tastes um, and new um, risks being taken with our kids, right? Well, and how fun is this part? I mean, you're choosing to do, hmm, are, those, are those balloons or flowers? I can't tell from upside down. They look gorgeous, whatever they what are, they but like? <laughs> I mean, sky's the limit here. I just, yeah. I can't wait to do this with our students they to see what little um, pictures they come up with. And it's just know, amazing. Yeah. And this is where you could get really creative at home. And quite frankly, empty out the fridge, right? Yeah. And chop up, <laughs> chopped um, pineapple, any leftover meats that you had from the night before, any vegetables, even make a sweet one with you know a little bit of cinnamon sugar and just some beautiful fruit on there. Yeah, be so lovely. nice. But um, I actually, so I was inspired, well, my daughter, um, she did some beautiful, uh, wait till you see it, but this is just super simple, just like that, and you know, we were lucky, we're able to harvest um, the chives from our food wall. So and much fun. Soon, we've actually started growing them, the edible flowers. Can you imagine how magical it would be if no, we had some... No, gorgeous. We could do a whole spring garden right on here. I mean, those chives too. Gosh, you could write your name in those. You yeah. could do all kinds of things. Yeah, I'll do a nice big sunflower oh, here. so fun. And so I cut these really small because I am um, mindful that this is only going to cook for 15 minutes um, in the oven because the crust is quite thin. Which is great, yeah. It's perfect, yeah. And we just want, we don't want um, these to, well, I don't mind them raw, but we don't want them to be overcooked. We don't want them to be uh, boring to taste, and we want all those sugars out. So I cut them on the smaller side there. That's my attempt at a sunflower. Oh, a big yellow octopus. I think that is <laughs> now gorgeous. It's a sunflower. It's <laughs> now a sunflower. it looks like a sunflower. Okay, I love there we it. We're gonna do this. I'll put a stem on it. Beautiful. Okay, so just like that. So they're like that's super simple. Our kids, our students will spend forever I can't wait. doing something like that, right? Super easy. How just fun! Like that. So and colorful, so and as colorful. we are always talking about eating the rainbow, this is a perfect this and delicious it. example of doing that. Yeah, and I um, got these little baby peppers. They're perfect. They're so much sweeter. We spend 15 minutes on knife skills, slicing yeah. these, and discovering like all the different sizes mm -hmm. and the yield that comes out of it. It'd just be so much fun. So I'm gonna finish this with a liberal amount of sea salt or kosher salt, just right over top because uh, I the vegetables haven't been seasoned. You know, we were talking earlier, we probably could um, toss the veggies in a little bit of flavored oil uh, to go in before we put them on, just to add an extra layer of flavor. Katie had a great idea, maybe brushing it with a little bit of an egg wash to bring out all the beautiful golden brown Well, that would colors. make it shiny, yeah. But yeah. I mean, that looks right, flawless. Great, great work, look at that, how fun. Such an artist. Okay, so that would be the oven, it's not hot enough yet. But I'll show you what it looks like. And you know, while it's baking, this is the time where we would um, clean up our dishes. It might be fun to also prepare, you know, I don't know about you, but I love to dip my focaccia into olive oil, a little bit of chopped garlic and balsamic vinegar. So nice, and yeah. And that's the time we could do that. We could even roast the garlic first to make it sweet. But look at this, like seriously, that's how it comes out Just of the oven. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And that's 
that's art right there. It's a beautiful piece of art. Your, your kid will, um, your, your child will love that. Maybe hard to eat it because it's so beautiful. I know, you wouldn't want to cut into that. So I nice. Think I, I think I will suffer through it, not cut into it. And your niece Abigail says it looks very cool and that Aww. that was a lot of fun. That was, oh good, I'm glad. Abby, yeah. maybe you can make one for me and I can, you can send me a picture. Yeah. I'd like to see it. So there you go. How did I only do that? That was pretty fast. That was fast. I did fast. say it was a fast one. There's um, our beautiful, Monet-inspired sunflower flatbread. I think it's gorgeous, yeah, and it's we will be posting the recipe for that probably later today or yeah. tomorrow. So if anyone goes ahead and makes that, please send us a picture of your beautiful, beautiful artwork. It'd be Tag fun us, to have yeah. A food gallery. Well, I can't really? wait to do this with our students yeah. and then take yeah a picture of all of them we because even, they we are just even, gorgeous. You know, make a picture frame with it and then do something inside. Yeah, it's, this is lovely. Asparagus is really nice right now. Yeah, if you can shallots. Get, are those little baby, purple. baby green beans? I think chive oh, yeah. flowers, just yeah, about anything so you could put on there, there so. And if uh, anybody's looking for things to do starting next week, our sessions are open on Tuesday. We have a few spots, we have some spots left. It's not a lot, they're filling up, but uh, we'd love to see you and uh, we'll keep you nice and safe. Yeah, and you can yeah. read all about everything we're, we're doing for our opening on our social media, on yeah. our website, and we're yeah. very excited to have our students back yeah. in here cooking with good. us. Have a good. great day, everybody. Bye.